Well, folks, welcome to Land Timber Stream. It is Thursday night, Friday Eve. Man, I'm looking forward to Friday. Also, I've been busy this week, um, and we've got some uh, already some good discussion going on here in the chat. Nasquez, uh, folks, if you've been following our Discord server, you will you may or may not remember a uh, kind of a little bit of a nightmare of a uh, spanning tree configuration that he had to deal with. So um, I'm glad to hear that it's. You know, we just got an update here that it's uh, worked okay. I didn't mean Cisco switch. I was a bit surprised. Yeah. Yeah, with those features and the interoperability, anytime you have advanced switching features and multiple vendors involved, um, I have seen I have seen issues like what you're talking about there. I want to adjust my lighting here a little bit. I've got a bit of a smoothness issue that helps a little bit uh bear with me one moment folks i i lost my shades like i have a different pair of shades and i lost them in new orleans go figure so i'm wearing these other ones um and there we go here I'm trying to get this gray box over here. I'm trying to get rid of. I deal with camera issues all the time, folks. I'm like, uh, at my job now, I'm part of a scrum team and we're on camera all day. We're on webcams all day long and I'm constantly, I really need to get some, pro I, I saw one streamer is using the ring light. That's what I think I want to get is a ring light. And they're about a hundred bucks. So who knows, maybe, uh, Maybe there'll be one under the tree this year. <laughs> uh, that's what I've really been... I, I've been saying I would buy one. And it has to do with the lighting on this uh, green screen. Not enough, I don't think. Anyway. That's a little better. Enough playing with that, folks. Let's get to some labbing. Um, and let's see. Nesca is saying the working solution was to change... Uh, spanning tree protocol mode and then RubyPD filter that they will reconstruct the whole spanning tree topologies again and again. Lots of small inter Oh, I can imagine. That's like one of those holes that you had to basically dig out of. Like, it's, it's a hole not easy to dig out of. And while you're making changes, like your, your topology is going to just... Um, reconverge over and over until everything is finally yeah i figured that's kind of what you would run into um but i know you're glad that that's that that's going well good folks we're down we're at day 332 32 days to go until my ccie routing and switching written exam scheduled for the end of this year yes there are 32 days left in this year i can't believe it folks we're almost in december Jeez. Um, anyway, 32 days left to go, and um, I'm ready for it, man. Uh, I mean, I'm not ready for it. My wife asked me last night, or no, someone asked me on stream, you know, do you think you will be ready? Or how do you know when you're ready? And for the written, I don't think you ever do. Like, it's so all over the place in terms of content and that... You can never really memorize or learn everything for the written and retain it within like a short time period without having to relearn and relearn. So, um, but you know, I'm feeling much more prepared than I have ever been. I've covered a lot of great topics. We're going to cover one tonight, EEM, which I've been pretty weak in and is important for the written. So... Um, in the, I'm actually in the middle of a lab right now. We'll get into that in a minute. Still rocking the Mojave wallpapers. Not tired of those yet. We got little ducks or something here. Birds. It's all pretty cool stuff. Target date. So I have until Saturday night to finish network lessons and start on Evolving Technologies official certification guide. Um, I let them know on Twitter today, uh, you know, someone was posting about Anthony Segura's review, which I posted. Um, actually, did I post it in the Discord? I don't know if I did. Uh, let's see here. 
so we discussed it last night on stream. Yeah, I never posted it here on Discord. Need to be better about that. Um, let's look at last night's agenda. That's why I keep these agenda, folks. That's why if you ever need to go back, reference a link, if you need to do a search to try to remember something we talked about, um, it's, it's text searchable. So yeah, this was the book review. And he had good things to say about it. Um, I think, uh, Mark Milo, how are you? I think only on stream links, that is what I remember. Yes, you are right. So I'm going to post it right now. And uh, we'll also edit it here. Yeah. If it tells the summary, like Discord usually does, that's pretty good. So good review there. I'm excited about that. I'm starting that on Sunday morning. I'm going to make a big pot of coffee. And I'm going to put like extra coffee grinds in there for extra caffeine. And we're going to start reading. I am going to start reading the book. Do for him in the house. Uh, do for him got me with a good question today. We, you know, he has 16 days to go, I think. So his written exam. And folks, he asked me a really good question today. Um... Uh, let's see, and let me see what you said. Actually, it's one and two. Uh, sorry, dude, I don't know if you like. Uh, time goes so fast, I didn't know this book has been released out. It has been. Uh, sorry, dude, I'm going to open this over here. Because that has, like, some of your info on it. But anyway, uh, it's one and two. Okay, so this is his question. Uh, which two statements are true about MSTP and RSTP interoperability? Choose two. This threw me for a loop. I'm going to be honest, dude, for him, because I will say, like, in network lessons, they did cover a lot of, it does cover a lot of PVST. And I remember a very fascinating lesson that I covered here on stream of interoperability between PVST versions and MSTP multiple spanning tree protocol. So there's some interesting behaviors that happen and MSTP will actually sort of cordon off or defer whenever it figures out that in your spanning tree domain that there is an incompatible version of PVST like PVST plus, then what it will do is it will react accordingly. Um, and it will sort of defer the root bridge to be wherever that PVST port is in order to try to ensure interoperability. But when you start talking about MSTP and STP or RSTP and version numbers, it threw me for a loop. Um, so I wonder if you had a link on that uh, by any chance. And the reason I say that is because I was trying to find information sources on this, and I could not like to try to answer the question without guessing. And I couldn't really find anything definitive. Like I can find a BPDU version field. So every BPDU frame has a BPDU version. But in terms of MSTP versions, uh, so here's a question. Uh, which two statements are true about MSTP and RSTP interoperability? Choose two. When MSTP switches receive RSTP v2 BPDUs, it enables them to understand boundary ports. See, I thought that MSTP and RSTP v2 were compatible. Like MSTP did not need to downgrade or, you know, um, to not be, in other words, MSTP has a uh, common domain and that it would defer that to RSTP v2. I thought it was interoperable, but I, I must have been wrong. So you're saying one is, is correct and two is correct. RSTP switches can understand MSTP v3. Yeah, that makes sense. 
go along with that. I, if I'm understanding the versions right. Yeah, see, and, and this is correct. So it's not about RSTP versions. It's about BPDU versions. And who is sending them? So RSTP switches can understand MSTP V3 BPDUs. So in other words, BPDU frames with version 3 in the frame um, in the frame payload, it has the version bit and or bits. And RSTP switches can understand. Okay, I'm gonna have to research that some more. Uh, but yeah, this, I, I couldn't, I didn't get it. So great question, uh, Duprim. I really appreciate it, man. You're identifying holes in my knowledge that are gonna ne necessitate additional um, research. So that's good. I wanna try to, uh, you to me, yeah. Um, and that's the thing about the written, like we were talking about earlier, Anything in the direction of the information found in the M record? Not sure I follow you there, Mark Milo. M record? Yes, yeah, so when, when people say, are you ready for the written? I don't think you ever can be ready for the written. Because A, the questions are sneaky, man. The questions are very sneaky. You really gotta watch the wording. Like that was the case today, uh, Dupram saw that, you know, it, you really have to pay close attention to exactly what it's asking for. Because the way they draft or, or compose these questions, they are composed in such a way to really force you to pay close attention. And the other thing, just the breadth of knowledge that you're required to kind of at least try to be prepared for. Um, so, yeah, I don't feel, you know... My confidence level is not super high, but I don't think it ever will be for the written, to be honest. Um, but we, that's the thing. Uh, I think the thing, the key to the written exam is, at least in, in my case, yeah, even though I haven't passed, but I think the key is to, to be resolved, to do your best, to study as much as you can, and to be willing to fail, to, to recognize that you may fail, and if you do, that's okay. You are gonna, the exam is going to teach you your weaker areas, and you just have to have a determination that no matter what, even if you fail, you're determined to pass, and you're going to take it again. Um, and that's, that has to be a healthy mental and emotional approach, I think. At least that's, that's the approach I have. So, um, anyway, uh, lab, what are we on? So, yeah, we, we posted that link. Hopefully that will be helpful. Um, so I'm going to start that Sunday morning, big pot of coffee. We're going to start reading the, um, the book. And as Anthony Segura, I don't know if I'm saying that right, if it's uh, based on Spanish, it's Sequeira, but... He, so, the short, I like the bullet points. So he makes this short, and he says there are three, or four really good things about it, and I was glad to see this. One that, of course, and we covered this last night, but um, there are some hands-on work you can do. So even though I'm going to be reading a book, I do plan to stream Sunday, and I'll stream, you know, the, the next two weeks when I've, set aside to read this book and i don't know if that's enough time but hopefully it is um but yeah we will stream and try to do some some hands-on stuff here on the stream and uh, the blueprint topics are not in order so i appreciate knowing that beforehand before cracking open the book because that would have thrown me off but he's saying that he, he's convinced that every objective is actually covered that's reassuring because the a lot of the material that I have reviewed in the past, it 
Everything I've reviewed in the past so far has left out gaping areas in terms of what is actually on the exam. Let me just put it that way. I mean, I was blindsided in both exam, both attempts by material that popped up in the actual exam that I didn't never recall seeing in any material. So this is reassuring and no printed copy. Uh, which would have been nice, although I did not order a printed copy, so I'm okay with that. After he wrote the book, show IP interface brief is there. Hey, bud. Uh, do for him, I look at it like this. Kevin Wallace wrote the Cisco official cert guide for CCM for route, and he failed the route exam. Yeah. It's a game, folks. It's a chess match. So, that's how you have to look at it, you know. You just... And as one person said, a couple of actually CCIEs um, have said a little bit of luck. You might also need a little bit of luck. So that's what you got to bank on. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Um, I've covered today a good bit of material. So let me pull up where we're at on the network lessons units. I got through IPSLA. Um, I got through, so I, I didn't cover this on stream, I don't think. Uh, NAT64 static. Man, I would have liked to, I would really like to lab this because the lab here did not work on the iOS, uh, on the viral image. So specifically, well, I won't go into specifics, but I think you may have to run that on the CSR1000B um, image. And, and that's fine, but I still don't fully understand all of NAT64. I think if I had time to read this entire article, which I posted in Discord, that I would. But it, it, this is a great white paper right here. And... Um, it really goes into depth explaining, like when you think about it, if you're trying to do, you know, NAT, why would you use NAT versus tunneling versus dual stack? Um, this goes into the article, this goes into it in depth. So I would highly encourage reading it like down to figure three. Now, once you get down past that, um, it starts getting very detailed in how you would actually implement any of these scenarios. Like this is design. So whether you're a service provider or you're an enterprise, and it's awesome. And I would love to actually uh, lab all these scenarios. But there's a lot of scenarios I would like to lab and I don't have time to do. So I just had to, you know, be modest and say, this is not going to work. Here's that link, by the way. It's also in Discord. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Nat64. Um, yeah, great, great article. But I, I got to the point where I got to move on. I got to keep going. I got to keep a pace. I got to, you know, not dig down into the rabbit hole, you know, so... Anyway, I got through that. Uh, so network services was finished last night. Then I started IPSLA. This is pretty basic, actually. The one thing I did like was the jitter, which I had not really lab before. So uh, I got to look at that and use the EvenG Pro feature for the first time, where you can change the quality of interface link so you can do delay jitter loss and that did affect my moss score uh, as I adjusted that so that was pretty cool I got to use that feature uh, for the first time in a real real lab so I got through I read through NetFlow there is actually a way to lab this but I didn't take the time I have a good bit of experience I have considerable amount of experience at my current job um, I work in an enterprise and we rely heavily on NetFlow to troubleshoot, analyze issues. So this is a good lab and there's actually in here something, um, uh, let's see, oh, hold on a second. 
Yeah, there's a service here called Intop. I've never used Intop, but there is a community version. So that's cool. So if you want to learn about Intop and or learn NetFlow and actually lab it, again, this is for the written, so I'm not trying to uh, prepare to configure this. Um, but it was a good lesson nevertheless. Uh, why did I close that window? Anyway, I went through NetFlow, and now I'm on the section of EEM which can be complex and is important for the writ, definitely. Um, so we're still in network optimization. Uh, NetFlow is done. I'm in EEM. And it looks like, folks, I may be able to finish. Now, PFR is extensive. Well, somewhat. Uh, but I started this write lab. Router IP traffic export. I've never heard of this before. And it says similar to span, and it looks pretty cool. So that's what I'm labbing right now. And let's go ahead and get into that. So what I have is a NAT cloud. So with the NAT cloud, I have that. I'm using the EVNG Pro version on my uh, iMac. And let's let's position reposition our windows here. And we can close. Uh, we'll move this, bring this back later for meat chunks. So again, brief lab, but just kind of illustrating the principles of, you know, A, I've never heard of write, and I had no idea it was sort of a function of EEM or utilizes EEM. Maybe that's a mistake, but it's listed under EEM in this course. Embedded Event Manager. Uh, but what it does is it acts like span. But it lets you do sampling. So span is like every packet, right, that you specify in the configuration, whether it's source or destination or VLAN. Um, this does sampling, kind of like NetFlow. And the situation described here in the lesson is that you have a client here your right um, router, you have the internet, and then you have an IDS. And what you do is you configure right. I won't go back through and get that again here. It's pretty simple to configure. Um, but you tell it what's the destination interface. And we've got running over here debug IP packet. IP packet debugging is on. Um, But yeah, you do this deal where you do incoming sample one in every five or outgoing sample one in every five. So it's sampling, kind of like NetFlow is. And I'm almost done wrapping up this lab. I've got everything configured except, let's see, on router seven, I can ping the internet. That works fine. But my client, which is router nine, So I have just the default gateway. The default gateway is going here. 223, 255, That's right. Yeah, and these are not coming back, and I'm not sure why. I wonder if this can. Unroutable. Oh, this doesn't have a default route. Yeah. Uh, let's just put one in here. Let's do that here as well. Even though it has a default gateway. Zero, 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 zero. Uh, two, two, three, two, five, two, five, two, twenty. Oh, did I put the wrong edge? Oh, oh, okay. That's the problem. Show IP interface brief. Okay. Oh, that's router seven. That's right. That's right. It's here. I need it. IP route. No, router nine.
220. Hmm, still unable to ping. Fall gate with two two three two five five two five two twenty ping two two three two. Uh, let's check here. Show IP. This is directly connected to router seven. Oh, I wonder if I have. Hmm, do I need a nap? I probably do. Um, so let's do um IP NAT. Well, let's see, let's do IP access list. Oh, access list. 99 permit a 223 uh, 205 actually I can do host 23205 205 221 and then IP NAT let's see interface jet 00 Copy that outside. Interface GI02, IP net inside. IP net source. Um inside. Oh, I'm in interface. That's why IP NAT. Um, source static. And then this is going to be two two three two five two five two twenty one. And then interface G I zero zero. Specify interface for global address. Hmm, let me look at my example. I uh, already forgotten. I just did this uh, yesterday, but I want to do Pat here. Okay, IP NAT inside source list 99 uh, interface. J zero zero overload. There we go. All right. So now there it is. So my client is pinging the internet, and router eight should have debug. You know what I need to do to see these debugs? Show debug. Packet debugging is on. Hmm, let me see. I may need to disable Ceph. To see them. I noticed that was a problem the other day with another lab. Um, I was trying to capture HTTP traffic and I was not seeing like it with IP packet, uh, debug IP packet detail. It was not showing it to me. 
And I noticed later in the lesson, it's like, well, you need to de disable Ceph because sometimes these features won't show you. If Ceph is enabled. Okay, IP Ceph is enabled here. Yep, it's enabled on both. Let's try it again. From my client, ping 1.1.1.1. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. So let me double check my configuration here based on the lab. So client just has a real simple configuration. Yep, that looks right. And then IDS box is very simple. And our write box though, let's make sure this looks right. Show, run, begin traffic. And this is your configuration here. IP traffic export, profile write underscore server. Interface GI01, let me see if that's right. That's correct. That's the direction that is going to, I think, let me double check. Yes, that's where it's going to export the packets. I wonder if that's a too small of a sample. Yeah, I'm still not seeing any of it. Uh, let's see, no IP Ceph. Let's do that. Yep, no, no can do. So if we look at this again, um, look at the right configuration, show, bi-directional, MAC address, 5000080000. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah, that is the MAC address. You know what? Let's capture. Duh. Debug in the lab, debug IP packet, not always extremely reliable, but packet capture is. So let's see if the traffic export feature is actually sending this over here. That looks right, by the way. And then if we look at our export, um, show run interface GI01. Yeah, IP traffic export, apply, write underscore server. Completely new feature for me. Okay, so let's look and see if we see them coming over here. Yep, not seeing them at all. Uh, let's see, if you want to use right to forward traffic, it's probably the... Yeah, I don't see, maybe this needs to be a different image. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a command we can use on router seven. 
show IP traffic export. Router IP traffic export parameters, monitor interface, JS01. Oh, that's the problem. We don't want to monitor interface, JS01. Ah, uh, okay, it's applied on the wrong interface. So what we have to do is uh, we apply it on this interface. So interface JI02, like this is our export interface, but this is the interface it's applied to. Uh, IP traffic. Hold on, what's the command? Um, this one right here. And then interface GI01, see we get this uh, console message, activated IP traffic export, and then we do no on that interface. Okay, let's see if that makes a difference here. There it is, nice. So if you have an IDS running over here, you're gonna get a copy of these packets. And yeah, here they are. Here's a copy of the ping packets and the replies. So that's cool. So yeah, uh, we've used a lot, right? We use span on switches. But with routers, part of the EEM functionality apparently is this uh, traffic export function. So very nice. I learned something new today, for sure. All right, next lesson, EEM. Cisco iOS Embedded Event Manager. Um, ooh, that's a lot of reading, folks. Not much. It looks like this lesson has a lot of theory, and then the next lesson has a lab. So... I'm probably going to go offline here and uh, just do some reading. So I'm going to save the lab, just do a little uh, housekeeping. Close that. Uh, I'm going to export these. And I'm going to share one uh, meat chunk that was, I have not read it all. Again, I'm not reading a lot of articles these days just because I got 30. I got a month to go. Um, not that one. Uh, this one I posted earlier in Discord, and it's here on the agenda. Not that one. Where did I put the agenda at? Here we are. So this came out on IP from Aaron. And if you don't follow them on, the, them on Twitter, they have some good, some good posts. Uh, but they have a deployment guide uh, for governments and enterprises in 12 steps. This is part two. I have not read part one yet, um, but they, they put out some good content. Aaron and these other registries actually put out a lot of educational content. Um, and so... I think I'm going to probably tonight go back and read both parts of this too. Uh, by, way, by the way, there is a company called the IPv6 Company. And this Jordi Pallet Martinez is actually CEO. So might be a good blog to follow. <laughs> Connect to the whole internet with IPv6. So obviously uh, Aaron is a big proponent of IPv6. Uh, this is a great site. I've been here before. Definitely check them out. Um, they have these report cards with the, which they've talked about in the blog. But if you've turned, if you're turning into to an IPv6 geek like myself, definitely check out that blog. It, it's very useful. That's all we got for tonight, folks. Thanks so much for stopping by. 
Uh, I'm not streaming tomorrow. Uh, Friday night is my uh, only day uh, off streaming. But I'll be back here Saturday and Sunday. And hopefully Saturday we'll be working on... We'll, we'll be working probably on PFR still. If not, if I finish PFR though, then we're going to go back and review some more lessons in particular under quality of service. So we'll be doing QoS labs and bar classification, shaping, um, L2 QoS, um, whatever time I have left on Saturday is going to be QoS. So tune, tune into us folks. You can also follow me on YouTube on Twitter, on Instagram. Um, and if you haven't missed a stream, you can always catch it, upload it later. You know, I'll upload this in a, here in a moment to YouTube. Thanks so much for stopping by, folks. Sending you good bits out to the universe. Also, if you have a Twitch Prime account, due to having an Amazon Prime account, you get one free sub a month. Feel free to use that here if you got it sitting around. Thanks so much, folks. Appreciate your time. And we shall see you on Saturday here in the Land Tamer stream. Have a good night.